Greetings and welcome. My name is Pastor Lauren Bruno, and I'm serving here at the beautiful St. John's Ridge Valley. We're so glad that you've taken a little bit of time out of your busy day to spend some time in God's presence. And that is, in fact, exactly what we're talking about. We're sitting here beneath this beautiful stained glass window, which we've actually done once or twice before. And I'm sitting here because it's the picture depicting the story of Mary and Martha, where Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. And even though she's not doing all the work she's supposed to be doing, Jesus commends her and not her busy sister Martha for her diligence, attention to discipleship over everything else in her life. So we're going to sit at the feet of Jesus, sit at the feet of God for a little bit today, spend some time in God's presence, and talk about what that looks like. Specifically, we're going to be reading a psalm today. Now, I've gotten a question a few times, why do we read a psalm in every church service? It seems a little strange. No other book of the Bible gets so much attention from us. What exactly are we doing? And what do I do with these psalms, which can seem a little bit haphazard and strange at times? Well, to begin with, I'd like to read a piece of a psalm, which we're going to be hearing this Sunday in worship, and give you an opportunity to spend some time in it before we talk about why we use the psalms. So here's Psalm 25, just the first 10 verses. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. It's a beautiful psalm, I think you'll agree. And it might help to know where these psalms come from. These are ancient prayers and songs that have been read and used in worship for generations. We've used them long before Jesus was born, and indeed Jesus will quote some of them. And so they are a sort of ancient liturgy. They have within them worship and praise for God, as well as supplication for help. They have within them a desire for transformation for the speaker and for the world around them. It's an amazing, kind of all-encompassing worship tool. And that's one of the reasons that we read them responsibly. We are putting ourselves in the position of the speaker in the psalm, because these are our prayers too. Sometimes, you see, there aren't quite words for the feelings we have, and so we need help. You'll also notice that occasionally psalms get quite vengeful. There seems to be almost an irreverent desire for revenge upon one's enemies. Why is that? Why do we hear that in the Psalms? And why would we repeat it? Well, that brings us to the question of prayer, what it looks like to sit in God's presence. We believe that we bring all of who we are, the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly, before God. We lay this out and we are welcome to be honest with God, about how we're feeling, about our pain, our suffering, and yes, our enemies. It doesn't mean that God is going to visit that retribution upon our enemies, but it's better if we open our full selves up to God, because that's when transformation can begin. 
So I'd like to turn your eyes back to the first verse of the psalm we just read. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. We open ourselves up to God for three reasons. One is for help. We turn to God when we don't know where else to turn, and that's okay. It's actually good to turn to God in these times of trouble and to say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. But there's a second reason. We open ourselves up to God, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul as an offering, telling God, please use me to do your will on this earth. Use me as an instrument of your peace. Use me, Lord, to transform the world around us. And then there's a third reason. We open ourselves up to God for transformation, not just of the world around us, but of ourselves. We're acknowledging that we are not perfect, that we are broken people, that we need God to look at us with loving kindness, with compassion, and yes, to change us. We want to be made in the image of God. We want to be transformed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. This might all feel like a very heady theological exercise. But it's not, really. And that's what we see in the Psalms. We see people bearing their souls to God and turning to God for help, asking for transformation for themselves and for the world around them. And we do that very thing. When we look around at the world and we are feeling the pain of our siblings, when we see the brokenness around us, when we see brokenness even in ourselves, we sit at the feet of God and we open up our souls. We offer ourselves up. We ask where we need to change and where God can use us to change the world around us. There is something incredibly freeing about doing that when we know that God is a loving God and wants only the best for us and for the world around us. There's something incredible about asking the Holy Spirit to come in and change us, even if it's also challenging. You see, when the Holy Spirit gets involved, there's no holding back. You're all in. And that can be an incredible experiment. So I challenge you this week, say these words to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul and ask yourself what that would look like for you. What would it mean to open up your soul to God, to show God the good, the bad, and the ugly, knowing that God already sees it? What would it look like to ask for transformation for yourself and the world around you in the middle of the chaos and violence and war all throughout our country and our world? What would it look like to invite God in to change even the broken parts of yourself? Because that too is possible. That too is what's promised when God tells us that God will make of us a new creation. When you're struggling to do that, to open up your soul, open up the Psalms. Try praying a couple of them. See what it would look like to write your own. One of my favorite ways to visit the Psalms is through song. And I have a favorite. It is by Marty Haugen. Um, it's a setting of Psalm 141. And it goes like this. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O oh God, I call 
to you. Come to me now, oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God, Deep in my heart may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, Creator of life, all praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. You'll hear in that psalm that Marty Haugen made Psalm 41, 141 his own. He changed some words around. He played with it. He made it his own prayer. And you are welcome to do the same. Get creative. Figure out what this looks like for you. I can promise you it will change and transform your prayer life and your wider life. So, life is short, and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those with whom we walk this earth. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>